computer. Woo! So we are about to go live over on Facebook. This is an amazing, revolutionary discussion with my girl, Tracy Neely. So you are in for a treat. And Tracy, it's so interesting. Like the thing that I clicked on this morning to watch, I was like, ooh, this is going to totally relate to some of the questions that I'm going to ask you. And really how you, you know, I feel like most of what you speak about is it really lives heavily on like intuition. And I want to share with you something that, um, something that I watched and what she said. And I was like, mm, I wonder if we could see things that way and how would we show up in that light. So we are live, we can't see it, <laughs> but we are live on Facebook. So hey, Facebook, this is definitely new to me going live here. And I got my girl, Tracy Neely. She is an intuitive life coach. She also focuses a lot on human design, breath work. She has a course called Breathe Alchemy. Yeah. Right. And this is going to be an intuitive led discussion on really, I, I would call it intuitive living because I feel like that's a lot about what you talk about or how do I feel and how does that make me feel and tapping in with the emotions and all the things. So first and foremost, introduce yourself and let the community know who you be. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I love you so much, sister. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Sending you so much love. I am Tracy Neely. I'm an evolutionary healer, intuitive life coach, human design guy, but more importantly, I am here on a mission to impact lives because we are all uniquely designed to express our gifts, our wisdom, our talents and abilities in a particular way. And when we connect with our inner self, our inner knowing, our inner guidance, our inner GPS system, life becomes so magical. So thank you so much, Ebony. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, and your beautiful space. I am really honored. Thank you so much. I am thankful that you're here. And I'm actually just, I got you, I got uh, <laughs> Facebook pulled up over here <laughs> on the phone. And listen, I love all that you do because essentially that is life, right? Right. Life is energy. Right. And I was in a discussion yesterday where someone kept saying it a few times. And I'm like, we have to get out of that mindset where it's like, oh, well, that's weird. And that's woo woo. Everything in life has been reversed. So what's natural, what's normal, right, is right. looked at as alternative. Right. Absolutely. And yes. then everything that's not natural, not normal is looked at as the mainstream acceptable. Right. So even when it comes down to energy, when we say, OK, everything is energy, we are energy. And it's really getting people to be uh, tapped back into their, really their intuition. So I want to share with you what I watched this morning. It was a really short clip, it was about eight minutes. Can't remember the woman's name, but she was talking about intuition. And she said, what I noticed, she was from Jamaica. She said, what I noticed is in the developed nations, you know, um, where it's like always busy and always fast, people have a harder time getting in touch with their intuition. You know, she's like, but where I come from in Jamaica, like most people are being led by their intuition. Right. And one of the things that she actually talked about that I was like, I would love to hear your opinion on this. She talked about procrastination. Mm. Mm. So she said, you know, a lot of people out there are saying, you know, if you procrastinate that you are like, that's not, you're not, you know, you're hindering your success. And, and she's like year after year after year, what procrastination has served for me as is my intuition telling me not yet wait for those circumstances to be you know uh, prime for you to be able to you know lead continue with the intuition that you felt so how do you feel about that like I've never heard it that way and I was like wow that is a great way to look at it and I think there's different types of procrastination but if we're looking at it from that point maybe we can give ourselves more grace with you know, really tapping in with the intuition. Right. So are you speaking of Paula? Are you looking at one of Paula's videos? <laughs> Paula, <laughs> Tracy, listen, this, that's why you are my sister. And every time I look at you and I look at us together, I'm like, we are so related. I'm like, there's something there that we don't know yet. <laughs> I, I love Paula. You. I love her. You know, what's really interesting about procrastination because procrastination is the symptom. 
Mm. I think if we get to the root cause, a lot of time it's fear, right? Because fear paralyzes us to the point where we don't even hear or trust that inner knowing within us. So when we speak about intuition, it's about going within, yeah. going within self, right? Mm -hmm. When we are present in ourself, we can begin to feel, hear, and sense what is that voice inside of us saying? There are many folks that say, oh, I, I'm not intuitive or I don't, I don't feel my intuition. Well, how fast are you moving? Because many, many times we're moving so fast that we're not feeling. Mm. Because intuition, everyone thinks it's all from the mind. But I believe that when we go within, our inner knowing is the feeling from the body that then moves up into the mind. So procrastination is something that people talk about because we live in this world. We're spiritual beings in this human body. And in this human body, people will say, you're not doing this right. You're not doing this. You're, you're, you're going too slow, whatever the thing is. But when you begin to trust and feel that inner knowing within you and you say yes to being intuitive, because we're all intuitive, like we're all intuitive. But when you have that mindset of this is too woo woo, then what you're doing is you're blocking the energy from flowing into your knowing, period, right? So it's a really interesting thing because the world will tell you who you are. The mind will tell you stories, but your body knows the truth, mm. right? Like the body knows the truth, but when we are so dis disconnected from ourselves, and we are more connected with the world, we stop trusting mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm here for all the information, all the, the conversation about intuition, because we're living in a shift right now. There's a paradigm shift. There's this cosmic shift. It's been happening all year long. We're in an energetic year of seven. We're here to elevate into the deeper realms of ourself mm -hmm. so that we connect and trust and we move from a place of knowing and being versus all the doing. Because where is all the doing getting us? Yes, we're, there are things we are going to do, right? We're going to take inspired action. But when we're doing it from a place of not really trusting or we're frustrated or we're confused, it's because we stopped hearing and listening to our inner knowing. Yes, we hear with our, we hear with our ears, but we really listen with our heart. So what is your heart saying? In this moment, ask yourself deeper questions if you want to connect with your intuition. Mm. Oh, that was so good. And I do believe that. I do believe even within me, the doing, like the doing, even, you know, being in that space of, you know, I had, a, I asked the question the other night of like productivity. What does productivity mean to you? You know, it's like re my whole mind and my body is like revamping that feeling of like, okay, well, productivity, you know, is, is that allowing me to be right and, and tapping in with, especially as a business owner, I feel like there's, there's, there's always so many things to do, right. Or so many new things to learn that, you know, it's like my attention is like over here and over there. And it's like, okay, bring it in, bring it in. Yeah bring it in what do you want to do what works for you right now what feels good so I would love for you to share just really about your journey because I think it's important for people to understand that we all come to points of in our lives where there's like this awakening and there's things we have uh -huh. to experience and there's things we have to grow through glow up through in order to really get back into our bodies into that knowing so yeah. can you share a little bit about your story and how you came to be yes the, the, the goddess that you are <laughs> <laughs> love you what's so fascinating is when I was growing up in Chattanooga Tennessee my great grandmother would always say you are so wise and I would love to sit with her and listen to her stories I remember 
um, we would sit on like, they called it back then the stoop, right? We would sit mm -hmm. on the stoop. Mm -hmm. And I remember she taught me how to eat watermelons because back then there was no such thing as seedless, right? There were the real watermelons with seeds. So she would, she, so as I was eating this watermelon, she would tell me these stories. I remember she was blind, but her inner eyes, her inner knowing was amazing. She had the bluest of eyes. And she said to me, you are a wise soul beyond your years. Remember that it's going to serve you in the future. I mean, I was like, okay, can I have some more watermelon? I mean, <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I was probably like, I don't know, seven. Actually, I was visiting Chattanooga. I lived in Connecticut until I was 10. And then I moved to Chattanooga. I was visiting and I used to just love being with her. Like everything in her house smelled like perfume. It was just beautiful. She had jewelry. But that was really probably the start of me knowing that there was something inside of me where I had a knowing beyond how I knew things. And for a long time, I hid that because I already felt quirky and different from everyone else. I didn't speak the same kind of language, meaning the words I spoke weren't other things kids were talking about, you know, like I would look at them like, what are they even talking about? You know, like, let's have some meaningful conversations, but I'm young, right? Yeah. So that was really, really the journey. When I was 24, I moved to New York City. And that was where I really feel like I learned how to be for sure. Because Manhattan is a serious place, you know, like you think you know things, it to teach you some things. Oh, yeah. So when I moved there, I loved it, right? Like I felt like I was living my dream. I'd always wanted to live in New York. Everyone in high school was like, you've been talking about this forever. And I'm like, really? I have? They're like, yeah, that's all you talk about. So as I'm living there, I decided to go home to visit my mother to get my teeth cleaned because I'm like, it's probably cheaper in Chattanooga than it is in Manhattan. Long story short, I had my teeth cleaned and the little spot showed up and it was a tumor in my jaw that was very rare. They didn't know where it came from. So um, that was probably the biggest blessing because coming back from that, having my jaw removed, having to learn how to talk, how to eat, how to be like not just physically healing, but emotionally healing. Yeah. I knew that I wanted to pursue the wellness, holistic community, went back to school. And that was really probably the journey that I started on. But then I had a dark night of the soul in 2010, where it felt like everything was crumbling. And I remember like, I'm like, how many more ways can I pray that things get better? Like, I'm like, God, come on. Like, what do I need to do? Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to beg because that's an energy that I don't relate with. I don't resonate with that. But I just want you to know, Lord, that I'm deserving of so much more. I want to feel more. I want to be better. I want to live a life that is vibrant. Because in the moment, everything felt dark. But I remember having a dream. And my spirit came to me and said, why are you hiding? And I'm thinking, I'm not hiding. I'm a Libra. Everything I feel, like you can see it. But what I was hiding was that I was highly intuitive, that I was super psychic, that I was a healer naturally, mm -hmm. but I had allowed the world to tell me who I was. Yeah. So that led me on a journey of coming back to the remembrance of self, which is the most important thing that we can do to be on that journey, to come back to our path of knowing and, and, and embodying who we are is such a beautiful, it's a beautiful journey. And so that is where I am. And I made it my mission and my assignment that I would hold space for others to be all of who they are, to show up in the fullest expression of themselves, mm -hmm. to connect deeply with all aspects of their mind, their body, their spirit, and their soul. And that is the assignment. Like, I, I'm like, okay, I got it. I can do this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. I'm getting chills the whole time as you spoke. <laughs> so thank you, Spirit, for being here and just guiding this discussion. And thank you, Tracy, for your authenticity. And you said something that actually sparked the remembrance of a different question and like where I wanted to continue rolling with these questions. And, you know, I know so many people can relate. And I think one of the things that you said that I think people don't recognize because they're not in their bodies is that when we go through changes, there's like an emotional upheaval, right? So whether someone has, you know, open heart surgery or, you know, uh, cysts removed, like all these invade, any invasive process to the body, it just like, especially if it, 
requires for like for you to um, relearn something that was natural to you, talking, eating. That's na- that's right. a natural thing that we all can just effortlessly do, right? Until yeah. we see it. Right. And right. also gives us a deeper appreciation oh, for I women bet. can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You look at things so differently. Life yeah. takes on a whole new color. Yeah. And you really actually put that in perspective for me the one day when we were on a clubhouse and you said, you know, there are people that have to travel miles and miles to get their water. Yeah. So for me, drinking water, it's like an, it's a, it's a gratitude ritual. Yeah. I don't think you worded it like that, but it was to that effect. That's what I took away from yeah, it. Yeah. Right. You know, we don't, we don't always appreciate the mundane things. I was about to say that, that I feel like my life transformed from the mundane into the mystical and the magical. Like everything about my life is mystical and magical from the time I open my eyes until I close them at night. Like I appreciate so much, like everything is an experience for me. And I'm like, I'm here to get the fullest expression of this experience while I am breathing and living. I love that so much. And you know, not for nothing. I didn't know you were a Libra. So that makes sense. I have a lot of Libras around me. <laughs> oh, yes, sis. I love beauty. I lo- I mean, I see beauty in, in everything. I mean, I remember being in the park with my husband and we were walking and I saw this flower and it was like this vibrant orange and then it had fuchsia inside of it in yellow. And I was like, oh. I was like, look at this. He's like, what? I was like, look at the beauty. I'm like, I feel like I could cry at this moment. He's like, okay. <laughs> I love those moments, <laughs> right? Because then you get to, you get to bring people into that. Remember yeah. as well, you know, so it's, 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 uh, it's a beautiful thing. You know, it's a beautiful thing. And I love that. We all need that, right? We all need that, that knowing of that. Everything is magical. Everything is mad. I mean, and it's interesting when you said someone spoke about woo, right? Because I remember this woman who said, I really want to work with you, but I don't know, because it seems like you're like a little woo. Like she worked in corporate America, but she was like, you know, in the background, pulling tarot and all that stuff. She's like, I don't know, you you know, you might be a little woo. And I was like, look, I'm not a little woo. I'm all the way woo, yeah. if that's what you want to say. I said, everything is about magic. It's all, it's all magic. Mm-hmm. I said, if you think about abracadabra, what is that? I said, abracadabra is you being able to sense, see, and to bring into the physical what you've imagined in your mind. I'm like, it's all magical. It's how you see life, right? Because life is always lifing, but it's how you want to express it and experience it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And you said something earlier that I think is going to help a lot of people shift. Thank you, honey. It's going to help a lot of people shift, especially when we think about um, the woo-woo, right? And really understanding that, you know, we live in a magical universe. Absolutely. Even the ABCs. I mean, when you like peel back all the layers of everything we've been taught, you know, it's like people don't really see that the abracadabra has been placed upon us down to the fact that Hollywood, Hollywood, if you separate the word, that was a wood that magicians used to create their wands. So everything is this illusion. And when we peel it back, we begin to even just re-identify with ourselves, you know, and you said something that I really want to touch on. One second. got little babies in the background. (laughs) Levi's doing his thing. And listen, if you guys are over here on uh, Facebook, definitely leave a comment. I see the comments. I'll click on them uh, quickly. But if there's anything that's resonating with you, definitely leave it in the comments and make sure you're following Tracy as well. Um, Mm. You talked about hiding. Mm. And you mentioned something in yesterday's room. So Tracy is a medical intuitive, right? And I didn't, and when you said it, and I actually thought about this last night and I was like, I'm going to wait to the podcast to talk about this with her because that was me. That was me. I had started this journey of business in 2015. And then I started hosting events and doing all these things, but it was like very surface level, right? It was like motivation. Let's get women together. Let's, let's kumbaya. And then I just kept feeling this pull 
first it was like, okay, you're not telling your story. That was like the first, the, the first layer. And I realized that there was healing that needed to happen. So it was actually really hard for me to talk about my experiences without feeling emotion. So I was like, okay, there's still something there that I'm still holding on to and I haven't healed through. And as I elevated, then I felt this call to guide meditation. And I didn't feel a call to like go get certified. It was just like, God was like, listen, go guide people through meditation. Now my experience is in voice acting. So I started in communications. I would record you know, people from my previous hometown. My voice was all over the radio for all these different commercials, right? And that was like a happen chance in itself, like me just recording commercials. Just, it was like by fluke of me being working at a different radio station. So anyways, being called to teach meditation, I ignored it for a whole year. I ignored it for an entire year. And I was like, I'm not doing it. Like that was the conversation I was having in my head with God. Like, listen, I'm just not doing it. Like, I don't want to do it. I like to meditate. I don't want to guide people through it. You know, I'm not certified, all this blah, 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 right? And then as I like began to lean into it, and even to your point, right? Just like peel back the layers of the world, what the world tells me I need to be. The world tells me I need to be certified. You know, I need to have a specific practice. So when people say, well, what kind of meditation do you teach? I'm like, oh, well, this is transcendental and this is blah, 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 right? And I'm like, but I just, I literally created it for my own knowing, my own intuition. So when you mentioned the other day of like how I said in front of a room, like Tracy is a medical intuitive. You're like, people are supposed to know. And it's like, but I, for me, recognize that's probably one of the greatest pulls that I have towards you and our energy together. Because my focus has been so heavily on energy and specifically Carolyn Miss, who is a medical intuitive. And then here Tracy comes, <laughs> right? Here Tracy comes. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about like that hiding and like the bravery and the mind working it takes to really navigate those spaces of, you know, what we're being called to be. Because I think a lot of people feel those pingings. But they're yeah. so afraid. I, I've literally had clients too where they're like, you know, I have crystals and stuff. But when my family comes over, like I hide them all. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, like we can't live like that. It's so stifling, you know? So let's talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, the world has so many different perceptions of us, right? And there's so much conditioning. A lot of it we, we experience before the age of seven. So we take that conditioning into our adult lives and then we hide ourselves or we show up with what we think people will be okay with, like perception, right? So when we're hiding, what's really beautiful about this conversation is that hiding is surface. It is so much deeper than that because a lot of us are walking around wounded. We have, we have wounds we haven't healed. And many times when we haven't healed these wounds, they're showing up in every aspect of our lives. And then these wounds tell us stories about what we are, what we're not. You can't do this. You can only do this. And so what about if we began to lean into wherever that fear is and we begin to befriend it? We don't make it the scary monster because the fear is there. It's not about just hiding. It's like, well, what's underneath the hiding? Because as a seer, I deeply see into people and they'll share something with me. You know, I don't have time for this or I'm hiding. Okay. Okay. Let's get underneath the hiding. What are you not wanting to reveal? Because what we don't reveal, we don't heal. And so many, many, so many times we aren't revealing things because there's some type of feeling or emotion around what are people going to think about this? It's interesting because I did not want to even say to my family that I was a healer, like my family here in the South, right? Because I'm like, okay, we're Christian. Then what are they going to think? And then one day I was like, you know what? Life is short. And if today were the last day that I had on earth, I'm not going to have any regrets. I am not leaving this world with regrets, right? So talking about what I am, I remember showing up to a Zoom call with my family during like, you know, the Corona times, and I led them through breath work. And my family was like, what is going on? And then my aunt says, I've been intuitive my whole life. This is my 75 year old aunt saying to me, I'm so, she's like, I'm super intuitive. I've been intuitive my whole life. So the story is we may believe that people are going to think a certain way 
about what we're sharing, what we're being, how we're expressing, how we're living, what we're doing. But at the end of the day, what matters the most is what you think and what you feel. And you never know, you can give someone else the courage to say, wow, if this person can talk about this, if this person can express this, I can too. And in terms of being a medical intuitive, I've been able to deeply see into the body for, for so long, right? I remember I had a conversation with the medical medium, Anthony. Um, we were talking on a Zoom call, and this, this was probably four years ago. His assistant had reached out to me um, for me to do some work with him, but it just, it wasn't going to, it wasn't, it wasn't resonating with me. And I knew at that moment that I was here to support folks to see deeply into them physical, emotional, spiritual, mental, and to hold space so that they could really connect with the deepest layers and levels of their soul. And so I'm happy that you shared that with me about being in a medical intuitive because I'm not even, I don't even remember our conversation in that moment and why you even thought that. But that recently came out with another sister and I did not, I was like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not a doctor, but I said to her sister, is it okay if I share with you what I'm seeing? And when I shared it with her, she was, she was like, my mind is kind of blown. I'm like, look, still look at your doctor, talk to your doctor. I'm sharing you with you what I see energetically happening, you know, happening in your life. So yeah, no more hiding. I'm all the way out. And it feels so good because when you can be yourself, there's so much freedom in being yourself because then you're not trying to remember like, well, who, who did you show up as yesterday? How did you show up on Instagram? How did you show up on Facebook? But when you can show up as the fullest expression of you and whatever that means in the moment, like I'm a nature girl. Everybody who knows me knows that. I don't hide it. It is, it is my life. Now, someone could say, well, I don't want to be perceived as that. You know, I'm in business and I want people to take me serious. We have to let all that conditioning go. That's why I'm saying we, we're we doing, the new model of doing business is doing business from the inside out, meaning mastering your inner world. Because the way that you in, you master your inner world is how you hold space for others. So no hiding. But I also understand and want to give love when we are in that hiding, because there's so much around guilt and shame and suffering and silence because of how people are going to feel or think or judge us. But once we start to unlock what's been sitting in our body and our nervous system, and we just dip our toe in, finding out who we are. I ask every client, Ebony, who are you? Mm -hmm. What do you want? And why do you want it? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, sometimes it's like a deer in headlights when I ask, what are you, who are you? They're like, who am I? I'm like, not what the world says you are, but who are you at your core? Mm -hmm. And you know what I hear so often? I don't know. I don't know. Because if we don't know, then we will accept what the world is telling us. For sure. It isn't our truth though. So it's it's all about coming back to our truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I see folks over on Facebook are loving it. So shout out to you <laughs> all. Shout out to everyone who taps into the Soul Chat podcast. We love you. People relating with everything you're saying as, as far as hiding. And um, you know, you mentioned it to me when we had a call once, but that's how I know you, you lead with spirit that you just like, you just go, you just go. And you mentioned it to me and you're like, I'm seeing this. You're like, I don't know why, but I'm seeing this. And before you said that I had pulled, I don't know if I pulled my human design or I pulled something and it said spleen. And then you said spleen. I was like, ah, you know, and, um, you know, it's, I believe, you know, you know, the, the, the newer generations are less inhibited by that perception of what do others think? I think it's like half and half, right? Cause you have your, your people who, you know, they're totally like invested in what other people think. And then you have a generation that's like, we're going to do what we want. We're going to be who we want. Like, I don't care what anyone else says, obviously it didn't work for y'all. So <laughs> like, let me leave my own life, you know, and being aware to sit, you know, to look around us and, and see you know, are these people really happy that are guiding us, our parents, our grandparents? And I love that you had someone, you know, in a previous generation to you that was able to just pour into who you be. You know, I can totally see that um, deeper wisdom, even within you. And to your point, you know, especially when we, 
we're running businesses or even just in a corporate space, right? There's like this performance energy yeah. of like, it's like if we all just could take off the mask, like can yeah. we just take off the mask and just be? Right. It's know? so amazing you're talking performative because I have, I worked with an amazing, beautiful sister. And that was the thing. She's like, I just want to be myself when I'm online. Yeah. It's like, I want to bring out all of me. So that was the work I, that we did together mm -hmm. because I said to her, it is not about being performative. I said, because that's tiring. Oh, I yeah. said, cause in your mind is trying to figure out, well, like, who am I today? And oops, I didn't mean to show that part. I got to I'm like, no, when you have the freedom to breathe and release and just be all of you now, it doesn't mean you have to share every single aspect of you. I think that we are sacred beings and as sacred beings, we get to choose what we're sharing, but it doesn't mean that we're hiding. Not everybody is available for the capacity of energy that you are vibrating. So true. So true. Right. Yeah. 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 I felt that being pregnant. I, I felt that I felt like, okay, like it just, I didn't have that urge to share with the world, you know, and like certain friends of mine, you know, like they would message me and, you know, like, girl, you know, I didn't want to assume things, but like, I just felt like I knew, you know, and you normally do full body videos and you weren't doing full body videos, you know? Um, but in my, in, I just felt like it was so sacred to me in nurturing my energy and um, giving it out, you know, and, and, and like sharing that with people. So I think it's, I think that is the balance we do need to learn as well, you know, because we live in this social media world that's like, you know, share it all so people can relate. And it's like, well, you know, you do have to be discerning and you do have to, you know, know that everything in your life isn't, uh, you know, which is, it just led me to another thought. It's, it's not for <laughs> the public. It made me think of the Red Table Talk, right? Oh, yeah. If, if y'all don't know, like it was recently canceled, which I'm like, you know, I stopped watching it a long time ago because so I was like, this feels really toxic. Um, <laughs> but just knowing that everything is not for the public, right? Well, everything so is sensationalized. Yeah. I mean, that's what, um, I don't even watch the shows. What are the shows? See, this is the thing. I'm not, I don't even know what the word is. What is the shows where the women all come together in different cities? What's that called? Is that like a love and hip hop? <laughs> Or what are those kind of shows called though? There's a name for like it. Like reality TV? Yeah, that's, that's it, reality TV, right? We're living in this reality TV world where everything is sensationalized or you have to do the most to get the most views on, you know, on social media. It's like all the things that it's like, okay, I'm not knocking that, but I just am choosing to just show up as me and not even just, just showing up as me, showing up as myself in whatever capacity, right? Mm. Not just when I'm crying, but can you can you relate to me when I'm in my light? I am a light. I can relate to you when you are celebrating you and you're sharing your guide and you know your books. And of course I got your guide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um I want to relate to you there too. I don't want to only relate to you when you're in misery. Or when you just woke up with a bonnet on your head, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like the world wants to tell us if you're not showing up with the bonnet on your head, then people can't relate to you. you're not real. I'm real because I'm human. I'm real because I'm feeling I'm real because I have emotions mm. and nobody gets to decide how real I am. For sure. Right. For sure. Oh, which is why I love you so much, Sister Queen Tracy. We're going to end it on this last discussion because we talked about this the other night, which is, you know, as we all evolve and elevate, you know, no different, just any, in, you know, your, your, your space is the evolution of self collective. So, you know, really understanding what we are naturally evolving beings, we're naturally evolving. And you had this thought and I had this thought, which is, you know, that's triggering for some people. They can't relate to your light because when you're not in pain or you're not sharing negative things, you know, um, and as you begin to change, now you're not relatable and it's triggering for them. 
you know, so let's just talk to people as we get ready to close this out is like, how do we move through our own changes, you know, Mm -hmm. and either the release or conversations or energetic understanding that we have to really embody when it comes to like, this is who I am. This is who I am. And, um, how other people relate to us is really none of our business. Cause I don't think everyone understands that. I think we understand that if we have removed relationships, like coworkers or like people we haven't known for that long, but I think it hits us really hard if it's family or if it's longtime friends or if it's your partner, like how do we navigate those situations where we're not necessarily relating to people anymore or they can't relate to us because we are changing. What's your opinion on that? The first it really goes back to knowing that you are love, that you are light. I'm not talking about rainbows and butterflies all the time and that, you know, the, our shadow isn't there. It's like embrace all of you, like embrace the shadow, embrace the light, because without the shadow, there's no light. And without the light, there's no shadow. So we are duality. We live in a duality, like energetic beings. Energy is always moving. What are emotions? Emotions are energy in motion. Our energy is always moving. So in this moment, how are you relating to yourself? Forget what the world is saying about you. How are you relating to yourself? How are you talking to yourself about yourself? How are you talking to your body? How are you, how are you appreciating yourself? Are you nourishing yourself? Are you nurturing yourself? There are a couple of ways that we can begin to come back into the presence and to the remembrance of who we are so that we are in our own presence versus the world's perceptions. And one of the most beautiful ways to do that is breath work. Because breath work, which I believe is is our spirit in physical form, our breath has the capacity to open the spaces and places where we've disconnected from, where we've been hiding, what we've been judging. And our breath is like, okay, I'm going to give myself a pause to come back to me. I'm going to take a moment to feel. I'm going to take a moment to be with myself. You know, one of the most beautiful things that we can do when we start this breath work is to come back to our emotional regulation, right? Regulating our emotions, self-regulation is a beautiful thing because what it is doing is it's making you aware of the emotions. Many of us, we're we're on this trajectory where we don't want to feel it because it feels too much. And I get that. There are many life experiences that feel like a lot that our subconscious mind has done its best to protect us from experiencing over and over and over again. So breath work is a powerful way to come back to your energy, to notice who am I and how am I resonating with myself? The second way to do that is humming. People are like humming. Humming soothes and regulates our vagus nerve and it soothes and regulates our nervous system. Mm. When we are in that fight or flight with our nervous system, we are moving so fast that we don't even know who we are. We can't hear our voice. We can't trust ourselves because we don't know ourselves. So when you begin to hum, you begin to come back into your own presence. You begin to ground and be rooted in who you are so that you can feel embodied in your body, right? The body holds all the wisdom. So humming is a beautiful way to do that. And I wrote down a song, actually, Faith's Hymn by Beautiful Chorus. It's about a little more than six minutes. If you sit with that, if you give yourself the space and the time, because you're so worthy and valuable to do this, give yourself these six minutes to hum. And as you hum, you're going to take some breaths so that you can get the hum out you are going to feel the vibration of your body as your nervous system begins to relax as you move into your parasympathetic rest and digest. When we are in the rest and digest, we begin to come back to ourselves to be like, okay, I'm ready to feel this. I'm ready to deal with this. I'm ready to stop hiding. I'm ready to illuminate my light. We all are illuminated. Everyone has a light. But many times that wound is hovering and covering our light. So when we do breath work, when we do this humming, when we go out in nature, 
when you have beautiful um, souls like Ebony that you can sit with while she's creating these custom meditations for you, when you can sit with yourself and be still so that you can come back into the remembrance of who you are, the you before the life experience, the you before whatever happened in your life. When you can come back into that place and really simply just put your hands on your heart, one hand on your stomach, take a deep breath in, hold it, blow it out. What you're doing is you're releasing what isn't serving you. And this is how we come back to knowing ourselves because the, know, the more you know yourself, the more you can be yourself. And the more you can be yourself, the more that you will live life from a place of trusting and being guided by your intuition, your inner knowing, your inner wisdom, your higher self is here to serve you. So now it's time for you to come back to you so that you can trust and believe that voice inside of you. Uh, everyone is loving this discussion. I will, I will turn over to the comments after we end this live. And I thank you all so much for joining us on this beautiful, uh, revolutionary discussion with my soul sister, Tracy. Tracy, I love you. Every time you speak, I just get chills and I'm like, we might need to do a part two and come back and got yeah. you and allow you to guide people through breathe alchemy. And that was something you, you gifted me, which was that the breath. And then the breath and then like, wow, I didn't even know, like, I knew I could do that, but I didn't know I could do that. Yes. It unlocks so much where people have discovered and connected with their purpose, with why their soul is here to express in a particular way. I mean, there's so many ways that we can begin to heal. I love how you talk about like healing is easy, right? Yeah. I love that you say that because whatever we bring meaning to is what is true. Yep. So if I say healing is hard, it's going to be hard. Yep. Healing is about bringing all aspects back to our soul that we feel full yep. and whole. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I would love to support your community, connect in with them, share any guidance. And um, I'm really, really grateful for our time together. I love connecting with you. I think you are magic. I think that you um, are here impacting lives in such a potent way. That is a healing medicine for the heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, really grateful and honored to be here with you. Oh, I have to say, I agree. I, I am grateful that we connected and literally meeting in person, we were just attracted to each other <laughs> and we just stuck like glue. So I, I really appreciate, you know, this, it always is going to lead back to self, right? I appreciate that I can meet myself that deeply, that I can meet people like you that can reflect back to me, my own truth. And then I can yeah. reflect back to you, your own truth, and that we get to continue to evolve and grow. And I know that there's going to be people on here that they're going to be like, well, how do I connect with Tracy? How do I work with her? How can she help me? Listen, she's magnetic. You speak so highly of me. And I equally can say the same about you because you, you've held space for me, right? You've held space for me. And I would highly recommend her, okay? Highly recommend her, especially if you are desiring to really get in touch with your intuition, your body. And everything that you've said has just been so beautiful and nourishing even in this moment. So I can only imagine what that would be like to connect with you on a deeper level um, one on one. So let the people know where can they find you? What are yeah. services that they can tap in with you? Um, and then obviously, if you're listening to the podcast, it will be in the show notes. Yes. Yeah, so let's connect on Facebook. You can find me under Tracy Neely. Um, we can connect on Instagram. Please feel free to DM me. Let me know what resonated with you. My website is tracyneely.com. And I am holding space for you who is watching this. There's something being nudged to you. There's something that's saying it's time to elevate your life. I work with women entrepreneurs, showing them a new way holistically of doing business from the inside out, mastering your inner world. So I'm going to invite you on a deep exploration within you so that you really fully embody and express your purpose in this world so that you are illuminating your gifts and owning your inner brilliance in a way that is uniquely for you. So I am super, super excited to connect and really am 
I'm so inspired that people are wanting to elevate and they're on a mission to connect with something deeper than themselves. I feel like that's what we're all doing and being called to be in this world. And if they're connected with you, they're already elevating, right? Like they're in your space, right? Because there's a magic that they're magnetically attracted to, which is you. So I'm grateful for this opportunity to connect. Yes. Yes. And I believe in just continuing to share more good resources. When I come across people, that's why this podcast is not just me talking. I'm like, listen, part of this world is maybe I can serve someone to a certain level and then maybe I got to pass it. They got to pass on to you. Right. And I believe that's the, that is the evolution of self. Right. And as a business owner, I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with giving people additional resources other than me (laughs) to be able to pour into, into them. Right. Because we, we can get served in many different ways and grow in many different ways. And if you head to her website, you are going to see something you can click on for a clarity call with her. That is complimentary. Definitely book that with her and get to know her more if this piqued your interest and you are looking to connect deeper with her click on that follow her and let us all know what were your greatest takeaways you can let us know on the facebook live and if you're listening to the podcast you can let us know by dming either one of us or you can email me at hello at queens recognize queens.com even if you just want to tell me more things you want to hear i want to give a big shout out to new york to california and even overseas i see y'all peaking interest in the podcast and that means so much to me because at the end of the day, what I desire to share with people is that there's the two facets of who we are, work in progress and a masterpiece. And if we can illuminate, which is Tracy, this like that's your word, like you are the <laughs> illuminated guide, right? If we can illuminate really who we are, then that work in progress part gets a lot of love. It gets a lot of grace as we're glowing up through all the things, because listen, life be life and on all of us, but that don't all mean, the not, time, that don't mean right? not amazing. Right? And I'm happy to also go over to Facebook and, and connect with anyone over there. If you have Me questions. Too. Yeah. So yes, thank you, yes. sister. Such so greatness. Much. Thank you for holding space with me today. I know you've got to go. We got to go. Thank you all for tapping in. Thank you everyone on Facebook, listening to this on the replay, as well as everyone that's on the podcast, Soul Chat. This has been an amazing discussion. Let me just tell you the way to elevate even within yourself is share good things. When you come across a good podcast, a good song, like learn the essence of sharing with people because that in itself is an energy of abundance and you just never know who is going to need this. You never know. I send people who are watching this. Y'all know I be in your inboxes all the time sending you things, whether you look at it or not, I don't care. I know one day it's gonna might click, you know, you might need it, you just never know. So this has been divine aligned and always on time, Tracy. Thank you so much for being you. Thank you so much for serving equally in the way that you do and being unapologetic and and authentic and your words, your words just, they just soothe my soul. So I always uh, love communing with you in all the ways that we get to connect. (sighs) This has been great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Everyone have a blessed and amazing day wherever you are in the world. We love you. Bye, Tracy.